Recently, I've been wanting to get more into IFR flying with my little experimental home-built Vans RV12 light sport airplane. Now, what is IFR? IFR stands for Instrument Flight Rules, and it's basically a way to fly from point A to point B without seeing outside at all. That does exclude taking off and landing. You do have to see the runway, but flying IFR pretty much comes up as soon as you get into a cloud on an overcast day like today. When you fly into a cloud, you can't see forward, you can't see below or above you, and it's very disorienting. And an IFR trained pilot has to know how to focus on their instruments to navigate, to keep the airplane upright, and all that good stuff. So recently I did an upgrade to this airplane's panel to make it IFR legal. I had to put a certified navigator in there. And if you wanna see more about that process, uh, here's another video that I made about that. But there was one major drawback to the panel in this airplane, and it kind of falls back to the design philosophy of the RV-12's avionics system. But let me show you. Here we have the Dynon Skyview HDX where I have 99 percent of all the aircraft's information here you have airspeed altitude i have my artificial horizon on this half of the screen showing the ground and the sky i have it on um, synthetic vision right now so you can kind of see the runway environment there blue sky all my engine information and then my moving map right over here now the number one instrument that an ifr pilot is going to focus on most of the time is your artificial horizon. This is what tells you the orientation of the aircraft. So it tells you if you're banked at a certain angle, this will tell you if you're turning. So that's the easiest way to keep the airplane level in a cloud where you can't see absolutely anything. Now, if you look at it, there's only one screen with all that information. Yes, I have this screen, but it does not have good stuff like uh, airspeed, uh, it has GPS altitude, but it's basically a moving map and that's it. There is some redundancy built into this very simple panel. This Dynon Skyview HDX does have a battery backup if I lost the aircraft's main battery. So that'll run for over an hour if I lose my battery to the airplane, but this one does not have a battery backup. This would turn off if I lost all electrical source, um, but this one would keep uh, going and this would help me get on the ground safely in the event of just a, a battery failure. The way that the RV-12 is designed is all the avionics and all its electrical equipment feeds into one main board located right here. I think it's called the AV-50000 or something and all the electronics are plugged into one main circuit board. So even though there's redundancy built in here, if something goes wrong with the one main circuit board, I lose everything. Now, the chances of that happening are extremely low, but I have heard that that circuit board can be a little finicky. One time I started the airplane and I got black screen all over here. Luckily, I wasn't flying but I did lose everything on this screen right here. Uh, only one time after I started the aircraft, uh, I had to go in there and just clean all the pins. I'm not sure exactly what went wrong, but that fixed it and it never came up again, has never come up in flight. But back to the main question, with this setup right here, am I comfortable taking the airplane into the clouds? And personally, not really. So even though this setup is completely legal to fly in instrument conditions, it may not be the safest choice. So that got me thinking about further redundancy options. The Garmin GPS 175 does have AHARS data. AHARS stands for Attitude Heading Reference System Data. So that can give you a horizon like this, but it doesn't display that data on the screen. It feeds it out through Bluetooth to an iPhone or something, and you could get an artificial horizon streaming data to a phone which I have mounted here. I have used it for practice flights, but never in the clouds. But I kept thinking about it. And if I lose all electrical equipment here, I'm also gonna lose my attitude heading reference system data uh, to the phone. So looking at this panel, I definitely saw that I need more redundancy. You know, this is a failure point, And then if I lose my battery, that'll fail. And it's not a good situation. So in order for me to get actually comfortable flying in the clouds, I needed a very solid backup attitude indicator. Now, even though my iPhone could do it while streaming data from the Garmin GPS 175, 
I still wasn't very comfortable with that setup. So I wanted to find something fully independent with a battery and everything. And I think I found it and it's called the Dynon D3 Pocket Panel. I wanted to take a quick moment to share Florida Flying's latest supporter, Bravo Golf Watches. In a world of complicated and extremely expensive aviation timepieces, Bravo Golf took a step back to design a simple watch face which is not only affordable, comfortable, and elegant, but also easy to read in all situations. The design philosophy of Bravo Golf Watches is that a good flight tool minimizes distractions, it does not create new ones. My favorite and most useful feature of the Discovery Watch is that it has a separate dial to display zoom time. Now this is going to help tremendously in flight planning as constantly trying to convert local to Zulu time can be a pain. Bravo Golf timepieces make a great gift for any pilot or aviation enthusiast and you can even get the back engraved for added personalization. Make sure to check out their website to take a look at all their beautiful designs as they just recently released some new ones. I rarely say yes to sponsored videos but when the founder Bo Garrett shared his love of aviation and told me that the watches were designed, assembled, and tested in the USA, I I gladly said yes. If you'd like to own or gift one of these beautiful watches and also support the channel, visit the Florida Flying affiliate link in the video information below. And they're also offering $100 off all their watches through March. Okay, let's get back to the video. So yeah, let me tell you a little bit more about this awesome, awesome backup instrument. All right, so here we have the little device. It's a very simple little thing. It is USB rechargeable right here. It has an internal GPS sensor up here. It does need GPS to work properly, but it also does have internal accelerometers and gyroscope data. Right here, you can plug in an external GPS to get even better data, more reliable data, but it does work completely independently as is. And you can plug it in and charge while flying. There's one button to turn it on and off which is the same type of button that I have in my Dynon in the plane, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's turn it on and take a look at its settings. So here you just have the information saying that it's only good for a backup. Don't use it as a primary instrument, all that kind of liability stuff. And in my case, it is a backup instrument. So we're all good there. So we're going to touch it. And yeah, here we go. I have it on just the, the artificial horizon uh, setting right here. It does have synthetic vision. But on this side, you have your uh, GPS altitude. Here you have your GPS ground speed. Um, and down here you have your compass rose. So it tells you what direction you're going. You do have a turn ball slip skid indicator ready to turn gyro but yeah it's fantastic and it's nice and responsive it's not twitchy or anything battery uh, indicator up here gps signal up here uh, when i have it installed in the plane i'm probably going to be plugging in that external GPS source just for added reliability. You have your brightness control. I have it up all the way for the video. You can adjust pitch and roll and get it zeroed out however you like. I'm still trying to decide if I want to have it synthetic vision or not, but just to show you, this is what synthetic vision looks like. It shows you the green grass around you and the blue sky above. The only downside to synthetic vision is if you're flying over the ocean, the ocean's gonna be blue and your sky is gonna be blue. And that doesn't really help you try to recover from an unusual attitude so we'll just leave it there for this little demo but yeah display your turn rate you can have it like an airplane i guess or a magenta line let's look at that a little airplane symbol right there going back to display style either have your heading indicator down here or you can have it overlaid over the entire screen which as you turn it you see the direction change so it's a fantastic backup little instrument that only gives you gps data which is fine as a backup go back to the classic style and we'll turn synthetic vision back off so yeah that's it perfect backup little instrument now let me show you where i'm going to put it in my plane so the Dynon D3 comes with a lot of mounting options you can either mount it with a suction cup on the canopy or how i have it is on a little phone holder mount it comes with a clamp as well and just stuck uh, to the instrument panel so yeah that's the perfect backup attitude indicator so yeah i'm very happy with the little thing and i've taken on a, a flight review and it seemed to do really well i might move it up a little bit more or maybe find a spot kind of closer to here but yeah as a backup instrument absolutely perfect exactly what i needed and this little thing has the potential to one day save my life if i lose all of this equipment in a full electrical failure and i'm in the clouds and i can't see anything this is going to be my life source right here.
So here we have the Dynon D3 in action during the steep turn portion of my recent flight review. One thing I didn't do correctly was zero it out in level flight, however you can see it performing as expected with that nice bank angle, and it's not twitchy or anything, so so far I'm very happy with its performance. And here you can see the D3 in action during an aggressive slip to landing during engine out practice in my flight review. You can see that slip skid ball all the way to the left during the slipping portion of the landing. And as I straighten the plane out, the ball centers right back up immediately. So it's really turning out to be a great little backup instrument and super happy with it. Yeah, so one thing to note, I am not sponsored by Dynon Avionics. You know, I just wanted to do this video because I'm very excited about this little thing and I wanted to share it uh, for other pilots out there who might be looking for a good backup like this. But also, hey Dynon, if you want to sponsor, I'd be happy to tout your stuff. I love it. So yeah, Dynon D3 pocket panel, fully independent backup attitude indicator, ground speed, GPS altitude, synthetic vision, has like an eight hour battery life, really cool little thing. So let me know what you think. I'm gonna put it back in the airplane.